We live in an unfathomably vast world. And each of us has our own individual journey through it. As time passes, we grow and we gain new, unique experiences. But each of us is part of something bigger. Part of a natural ecosystem. Part of a human community. And it is together that we all take this journey into the unknown. It was winter's end when Thomas and I found ourselves heading south, out of civilization, past smokestacks and cooling towers, to a fond and familiar little spot in Kentucky. And once we arrived at Red River Gorge, we bumped into a friendly guy named Ron. He's really here. I'm really here, and these are really the Adventure Archive guys, Matt. I've run into the Red River Underground guys, and now you. Yes, guys, I'm coming back to the gorge more often. <laughs> yeah. After chatting with Ron, we put on our packs and hiked to the trailhead. This is going to be an interesting start of the hike because normally there's about 2.5 miles of road up here. It's closed for maintenance, I guess. So we're going to have to hike that 2 point something miles to the trailhead, then we're getting started. And then on top of that, it's a 16 mile hike. You went ambitious this time. We're gonna put Adventure Archives to the test again. All right. We passed by the gate that blocked the road and kept hiking. So usually when I hike, I start off slow and go up to a faster but maintainable speed. This time Robbie and I are going at a fast speed, so let's see if we can maintain it for the next 15 miles. This is only a slight change of pace for you because you go fast eventually. Mm -hmm. For me, it's we go slow the whole time. <laughs> so this is a complete change of pace. <laughs> As we went along the wide dirt road, we saw a sign that talked about the presence of historical artifacts in the area. The beginning of trips like this is always my favorite part, especially when you've had a long drive to get where you're going. Like you're so cooped up from being in the car, you're just like, man, I can't wait to just like, blast out to the trail. <laughs> it's like when you would get those Hot Wheels as a kid and you pull them up. Set yes, it on exactly, the exactly. <laughs> the road wound for miles through forests and past flooded ditches. Eventually, we reached the actual trailhead, which would take us to Rockbridge Arch. Okay, so that was a pretty short hike. That fast is three miles of my life. Yeah, same here. So this is a loop. At the end of it is the rock bridge, and we're gonna go onto the main trail once we get there. Now, we actually wanted to go here when we came here for Clifty Wilderness, and it's supposed to be really cool. Yeah. At least that's what uh, our buddy Ron, who we saw at the gas station said, so. Good old Ron gave us some food too. Oh, we'll talk about that later. As we descended, we could feel the thickness of the forest really starting to envelop us. So, any thoughts so far on your first trip to the Red River Gorge? I don't know what these plants are, and if Andrew were here, he would know. But I remember seeing these in your video, and I'm very excited because it is a bit of a change of climate and uh, environment in Ohio. So it's just nice to be out. I actually think I know what those are. Those are rhododendrons, aren't they? No? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure Andrew could tell us, but... Will the voice of God come in and let us know? <laughs> they were rhododendrons, an iconic part of the Appalachians. But more unique to this area are the sandstone bluffs and recess caves that tower above. Caves like these are usually good shelter from the rain, but... You know, I'm fairly positive that we are just in a cloud right now. Because it's not raining, but there's moisture droplets hitting my face. 
and, fitting for the moist atmosphere, we came across an old trunk covered in mushrooms. Then, as we skirted by a stream, some light rain started falling. Thomas, we definitely have some precipitation now. All right. We've been through worse. We thought about that. But the rain was nothing compared to the rushing of a nearby cascade. I love Red River Gorge, man. There's so many different things to look at around every single corner, and everything is completely unique. Beautimous. If you're wondering what this is, this is actually an invasive fungus. You can see how it comes out here, and if you pull it out, they're actually eyeglasses. The square of the longest side of an isosceles triangle is the sum of the remaining two sides. That's a right triangle, you idiot! <laughs> <laughs> so there's a difference between an arch and a bridge. For it to be a bridge means that there needs to be water going underneath it. And that's exactly what we have here. I didn't know that. Yeah. I only just read it off that sign like <laughs> 10 minutes ago. But... <laughs> <laughs> Wow, dude, that is incredible. We had made it to the Rock Bridge Arch. This was the perfect place to stop and refuel on a snack. So I call this Grievous Trail Mix. Not to be egotistical or anything, but it's consistent of pretzel combos with yogurt covered pretzels. So the key to any good trail mix is pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> if it's got pretzels in it, it's Grievous's trail mix. <laughs> the only thing it's missing is the buttersnap pretzels. Well, I brought something delicious to go with our charcuterie. Oh. It's actually not delicious. Mm. It's sparkling water, but... I enjoy How many that. times do you get to have carbonated beverages on the trail? Not often. Not often enough. Mm. Woo! Ding. Ding. After that, we headed onward. We had quite a bit left to hike. We soon came across a trail junction and paused to figure out where we were headed. Kentucky Highway 715. Or are we going to... Time to look at the map. <laughs> All right, so we parked down here. We had to walk this part because that road was closed, closed yeah. for some reason. And that's where we are right now, Rock Bridge Arch. Now what we want to do is we want to keep going along Swift Camp Creek all the way to 715. So that's an eight mile hike from where we are right now. Okay. Then the next day we're going to keep going, going and meet with Andrew and Brian, hopefully at this junction here, and then hike with them out back to their car. Perfecto. All right, ready? Let's do it. Andrew can tell me if I'm right or wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is Hemlock. The reason I know this is Hemlock is I've seen this a lot in Hocking Hills of Ohio. And this is everywhere in Hocking Hills. I don't know if it's Hemlock, but I do know that I've heard Andrew say Hemlock many times. Okay. So. Yeah, has he said I, it? It was know? indeed Hemlock. I, I think Good so. job, Thomas. I he was we continued on through the serene forest. We could see the creek in the distance, and up ahead was a split in the trail. I'll go up here, and you go there, and we'll see, see what happens. happens. This isn't even a map. This has a trail place. Yeah, this doesn't, but this is clearly a trail. What did it look like down there? Just a trail to the creek, but it might go beyond the creek. I'm not entirely sure. Well, on the map, it goes this way. This would just, yeah, lead back down to the water. All so right. Let's follow the trail blaze. It's probably the best Well, idea. I want to take a look just to see what it looks like. Sure. I mean, this definitely just goes down to the water. But it looks kind of cool, so we might as well check it out real quick. It's kind of a redundant story here on Adventure Archives. We don't have enough bags to pick it up. But just want to highlight all the beer cans out here. Shame on you, Mountain Dew! 
leaves and the fresh air filled our lungs, and we progressed along the trail. I've mentioned it many times before, but this feeling when you first get out on the trail and you really just start making some progress is one of my favorite feelings in the world. And I think my boy Thomas can relate to that. There's a lot of things Robbie and I don't click on when it comes to hitting those miles, we do. <laughs> That is a uh, log not worth crossing. It's like a 50 foot drop. You could not pay me enough money to cross that. <laughs> Dude, walking on this trail is like kind of disorienting because it's so far down there. Mm. You look and it doesn't seem real because the drop off is super sharp. I mean, it's kind of wet here and I keep freaking out that I'm gonna just trip on a root and go tumbling down. Luckily that hasn't happened. Yet. <laughs> that is lucky. <laughs> We soon came to a section of trail that was hard to distinguish from the rest of the forest. It looks like, I mean, it just goes right here. There's nothing over on this side. I do remember when we came here last time, there are parts that just seem like they're not trails, but they are. I was gonna say, I think I see the trail back up here. As we found our way again, we noticed the day getting dimmer. Not to be a negative Nancy here, but it is getting kind of dark. Yeah, it is, isn't it? What time is it? It's about five, 4.30. Say let's do another hour and a half worth of hiking at six. Wherever we are, we'll try and set up camp. Okay, let's cool. make some progress. The trees, clouds, and cliffs made the evening even darker than usual, but we could still see beautiful, distant waterfalls. And as high above the stream as we were, the trail continued to ascend. Gotta use that rest step. The scenery was beautiful, but occasionally marred by bits of encroaching civilization. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it down there, but that is like a full-blown plastic trash can. I'm sure if someone didn't intentionally drag it all the way out here and throw it out, it got swept up in a flood somewhere, but still. I'm hearing some white water below us and it's sounding quite ominous. That's all right, we got some good cliffs right here to protect us. <laughs> fall left if you're gonna fall. It seems like a literal lifetime ago, but this reminds me so much of the trail that I did on the Smokies. We should take you back sometime. I think that was our second ever backpacking trip and we brought like a whole bag of uncooked rice, a camping stove. Yeah. You had multiple changes of nice shirts. I remember. I'd like to redeem myself. I think I brought 30 pounds worth of gear and 20 of those 30 were clothes. <laughs> we didn't have a water filter. It that, was... That's where we learned about water filters. Yeah. We saw a couple people down at the creek and we were like, what are you doing? <laughs> we're filtering water. It's like, is that safe? It's like, it's the only way to, because we were boiling water. <laughs> that should be encouraging to anybody watching. Just. If we're still alive, then anybody can survive. You wanna know what's encouraging? This is trip number, what, 34, 33? And we're still making plenty of the same mistakes we made that first trip. <laughs> and if we're able to do it, anyone can do it. Actually. For some reason, there was a small pile of firewood on the trail. And just up the trail was a small campsite. Firewood there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Plenty of it, oh my gosh. Might all be ruined, but. I don't know, dude. I mean, we could take some of these. We yeah. might be able to get some of these going. It's pretty wet, but I think it's worth a shot. Yeah. After collecting the wood, we kept moving. In the forest, it's a lot darker, but as soon as you get up, yeah. there's actually still quite a bit of daylight. It's not as 
intimidating as it seems. Still though, got a bit to do. I checked the weather before we left, and it, I swear it said it was gonna be sunny. <laughs> I didn't see sunny, I just saw cloudy. Did not see anything about rain until Sunday though. Yeah. Wow. Wow, this is the Clifty Wilderness I remember from when we came. I see why it gets its name now. <laughs> it's Clifty and it's wild. <laughs> The trail descended and again became difficult to distinguish. We thought we had to cross across here. And that was looking kind of sketchy. And then I checked over here and I saw the white diamond. Let's go that way. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Whoa. Yeah, that is super slick, man. It's like a box of chocolates. It is melted. It seemed we still had to cross the stream, though. So right, this looks like a trail right here. I think so it's awfully tiny. It's a cool little corridor here. Welcome to my castle. <sighs> Gotta tell you, Thomas. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that campsite. I am too, for sure. All right, Thomas just noticed a big boulder in the distance. It looks familiar. I don't know if it's the one that we stayed at when we came here, but. I didn't go to Clifty Wilderness last time you were here, but from what I remember, it looks very similar. There's an arch right there, and just beyond that would be our campsite if that's the same arch. We're really close to the junction now, and if I remember correctly, before we get to the junction, the campsite where we stayed at at Clifty Wilderness was somewhere right in that area. So, with any luck, we'll be there soon. Suddenly, Thomas had an unfortunate stumble. All right, well, I think I just had my first spill out here off camera. Did Glad. I rip my pants? Yeah, that's a... Oh, pocket's a little ripped. You know what this means? No. It's the death of tan pants. <laughs> <laughs> The trails were pretty rough and rugged, but the rocks were beautiful. Well, you're not allowed to camp in the caves, but if you could, you better believe we would. That would be sweet. Okay, I am almost positive that that rock structure right there is where the campsite is, just beyond there. So... Not a moment too soon. Yeah, it shouldn't be long. But we still had some tough hiking before reaching the site. You're kidding me. The temple of doom right here. <laughs> but before we knew it, we were already at the junction, and we hadn't seen the campsite. GPS says we're very close to the junction. Man, okay. I can't remember. Shoot. We know 100% for sure that this trail will have campsites because the campsites were next to the water. Okay. This one will not have campsites. And I vaguely remember we got to this junction and we were like, we could keep going to Rock Ridge okay. or we could go back to a campsite. So I'm pretty sure there's a campsite just up ahead. Well, that's the good news. So long as we made it to the junction, I'm feeling a lot better. Yes, yeah, thank you. All right, you ready? Yep, let's go. Let's knock this out. Just a moment later, we saw a small side trail and followed it down. This is not our campsite, but this is a campsite. Sounds great. Got some sitting log, firewood. Yes. Look at this. We got some nice rocks. If I had a stamina bar right now, it would be flashing red. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. It's funny, man. In general, the relief of finding a campsite is just such a great feeling. Oh, yeah. But it is infinitely magnified when you find one in the dark. I am. I am exhausted. Like, I'm so tired, I'm not even hungry. Oh man. I'm sure as soon as we start cooking something. And boy, problem. do we have something special. Thank you, Mr. Ron. Our friend Ron had given us an array of fancy foods. Skillet biscuits and sausage gravy. Oh my god, look at that. Oh man. I mean, look at the artwork oh, on this. Oh, Kuju drip coffee. Oh my goodness. He just gave us all this. Freeze-dried beef and lamb gyro with noodles and tzatziki sauce. 
I think that's tonight, right? Well, first off, why have we never heard of these brands before? Yeah, why don't we pack these more often? Ron, you don't, you don't know how happy you've made me. <laughs> and Thomas had a little something, too. When I was in Hawaii, we had a bunch of spam, and I was just like, you know, it's pretty terrible. <laughs> it's not that terrible, though. <laughs> We started the evening with the freeze-dried gyros with noodles and tzatziki sauce. So while we wait for that to cook, I've got some ants on mini logs. Ooh, and I got tuna. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that smells like tzatziki sauce if I've ever smelled it. Yep. <laughs> Let me just get a little bit more meat this time. Mm, okay. I have no business saying this because my family's not Greek, but it just reminds me so much of my grandma. Nice. <laughs> and she's not Greek. You know what it tastes a little bit like? Mm. It's like Greek ramen. <laughs> it is. It is because it's got that ramen in it. Mm, man, those are good. Thank you once again, Ron. Ron. Oh my God, dude. You cannot imagine. I was happy to eat peanut butter sandwiches tonight, but. I was happy to be eating ramen. Now we have Greek ramen. <laughs> so we were in the gas station right beforehand. One of the nice things about gas stations is they sometimes do have local food. And this is from Miller's, Miller's Bakery and Catering. Yes. And this is called the peanut butter roll. This is literally peanut butter and frosting rolled together. <laughs> Dink. Dink and sink. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> That's too much, dude. This is not human food. This is pure sugar. <laughs> How do you even think of something like this? It'll give me the energy I need to clean. I'll get everything set up and then go to bed. Uh, I'm gonna save mine. <laughs> I can't eat all I'm this. I'm gonna save it in my mouth. Despite having carried the wood we found, we decided to forego an attempt at a fire and went straight to our tent. How is it? <laughs> it's so great to lie down. God, dude, nothing like a solid tent. I always feel like tents are bigger on the inside. It's like a tourist. It's like, oh, look at this. Yeah. I can move, I can move around. Robbie's here. I got all this space up ahead of me. I got pockets. <laughs> Robbie, you look like you're about to be uh, dissected by an alien probe right <laughs> above you. It's like. <laughs> I discovered something amazing last night. It was too hot to leave my coat on, so I took it off. But you can use your down jacket as like this neck scarf sort of deal. And it is the ultimate insulator for your sleeping bag. It just like blocks all the cold air from coming in. A little restrictive at times, but very warm. And I think I'm gonna go back to sleep right now, actually. In the daylight, we realized we had stayed at the campsite where I had gone swimming last time. And after breaking camp, it was time to move out. Let's head back this way. We're gonna take the shorter route to the road. It's not gonna be as pretty. It's gonna be safer though. Okay, Wildcat Trail, let's do it. All around us, water trickled in a zen-like fashion from the beautiful rock formations. So this is actually pretty close to the road, but this is where we camped the first night at Cliffy. Me and Andrew were in the tarp like right here, and Brian was in the tent like right here. And that was when the thunderstorm was clapping. Not a good campsite. <laughs> As we continued, we ran into three super friendly hikers, Eric, Diane, and Maria, who were also familiar with the show. <laughs> and tonight, we would be meeting up with Andrew and Brian. We had cell signal, so we gave them details about some changes we had made to our plan. Right, yeah, well, I'll send a screenshot of where I think you should park and start, where we're gonna camp, and where the previous rendezvous was. Okay, all right, see ya. 
So we're adjusting our rendezvous point to the actual campsite we're gonna stay at. It's right before Hanson's Point. We're gonna adjust where they start so they don't have to hike as much and we'll have to hike like the same amount. But anyways, yeah, good thing we had signal. And then we reached the road leading out of Clifty Wilderness and into Red River Gorge. Did you ever think you'd have it so nice to be able to hike on these paved roads it's, uh, all day? <laughs> definitely upping our miles per hour right now. It is like a night and day difference between hiking on a paved road and on the trail. And then a night and day difference between a dry trail and a wet trail covered in leaves with a cliff on the side. I thought you were about to say there's a night and day difference between hiking at day and night. <laughs> <laughs> Day and night! So Angel's Windows isn't exactly on our route. We thought we'd check it out, have breakfast, and then continue on. If anyone wants to steal these, feel free. <laughs> we left our packs, grabbed our food, and headed down to the trail to Angel's Windows. Holes had been bored by wind and water into the sandstone, leaving the cliffs looking like a piece of Art Nouveau architecture. Ah, that feels good to sit down. Bon appetit. This is just a simple almond butter sandwich with a whole loaf of bread. <laughs> Probably don't need to bring a whole loaf of bread, but it's just easier. You can never bring too much food. I do enjoy the culinary arts. That's not true, actually. I enjoy the eating arts, the gastronomic arts. I prefer somebody else cooking my food. After admiring the stone structures, we headed out and saw a familiar sticker. Well, would you look what we got here? Good old myhikes.org. Then we headed back onto the road and continued on our main trail. Go over here. Yep. This is us. So this is us right here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Put that way. I was telling Robbie earlier. Since we're in Kentucky, this is called the Bluegrass State because of the actual bluish-looking grass. But you might know bluegrass from the music, hearing the. Uh, sound of the owls and just how misty and foggy this whole ridge is kind of makes me think of a song. Oh Polly, pretty Polly, come go along with me. Oh Polly, pretty Polly, come go along with me. He took her over mountains and valleys so deep. He took her over mountains and valleys the forest was calm and quiet all around us as we continued on our trail. Only the soothing sounds of the trickling waterfalls broke the silence. We crossed a stream and entered a section of the forest that seemed especially primeval. I wonder how the other guys enjoyed their lobster dinner last night. Hopefully it helped them go to bed and get a nice and early start to their trip this morning. I'm hoping that they brought in some food. Last time when we came here, Brian brought us some lunch and it was like the most beautiful thing to have somebody bring you food on the trail. <laughs> and you know if they don't, you know who has us covered? 
Ron. <laughs> That's some rough trailage, man. Does it look like that's the trail? Yep. Okay. The trail had taken us up a steep, slick rock. We were warming up, so it was time to adjust. Yeah, I'm breaking out the sorry. Uh, sorry? Yeah. What's that? It's, you know, that clothing that Indian women wear? Oh. It's like kind of a sash. Oh, I see. That's how you wear yours. Right. It gives you some warmth, but some coolness. It worked before. Now the trail took us to a massive recess cave that dwarfed us. Can you imagine if you were the first person to find this? Just walking through the forest and something like, what on earth? Mm -mm -mm. I would love to camp under here and have a fire at night. Oh my God, that would be so good, dude. I'd love to be uh, part of like a group of bandits. That's oh yeah, that's your hideaway. Yeah. You're like, Dutch, <laughs> where's my money, Dutch? Arthur. Someone had a campfire right here. I'm very certain you're not allowed to, but. I'm very certain as well. I don't blame them either. <laughs> this would be a nice place to camp. Look at this sitting log right here. Oh my goodness, that is perfect. Whew. Oh man. Oh man, a sit. That is good stuff. Of course, if they allowed camping under the caves, they'd be at risk of becoming crowded, littered, or damaged. Plus, some caves pose the danger of calving off when exposed to the heat of a campfire. How is it? It's definitely heavier. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely have to start a fire tonight. <laughs> if I'm carrying this. We continued on, passing by rocks pockmarked by honeycomb weathering. And suddenly, the trail took us out of this surreal prehistoric landscape and up into what seemed like an ordinary forest by comparison. We had reached another road. Now, we entered the main section of Red River Gorge. everything seemed brighter and more open as we got closer to our destination. So this is the original rendezvous point. Obviously, they're not going to be here, but I think we will take this opportunity to stop and have lunch. Fill up on water. We made really good time today. I'm just excited to get to a campsite in the daytime. No more night hiking. That is great. You know who might have to do some night hiking? What time do you think they left today? They probably left 30 minutes ago. <laughs> See you guys tonight. It was true. As per usual, we had had a late start, but we'd get there eventually. We took the time to filter some water and then continued along the rough trail. So most of this is looking pretty familiar to me, but does it feel familiar to you from seeing the video? Uh, from the video, sure. Xander told me that there is a bit of a difference between Clifty Wilderness and Red River Gorge. And at first I was like, ah, I don't believe you. But here, I mean, it is, it's just more open. And you can definitely tell that that place has been designated a wilderness area. Well, we're here at the junction already. Now it was a short hike along the Shelter We Trace Trail to our rendezvous point. Worse. <laughs> so 
do you remember there being this many stream crossings last time? I don't. So I think part of the reason is because it's been raining so much lately, the stream crossings that you normally wouldn't know about are now at full effect. It must be. So let's do this one too. And now, it seemed we also had to hike up a small waterfall as well. So this area is the one where we saw a bunch of vultures. We should be coming to a big flat rock where we can get a great overlook of the area. We soon came to a campsite where we had stopped last time we were here for a snack break. To be honest, this is a little bit more bleak than the video before that I had seen, but in a way that's kind of its own beauty. It's incredible. It's the most open sky I think I've seen in a day. <laughs> it's great. Now, it was time to search for the campsite we were meeting up at. Okay, this could be the campsite, but I don't remember specifically. I kind of feel like this might be a little bit early, but we'll see. It's definitely a campsite. Oh man, uh, this is not the same one. Okay. Is it? No, this is not the same one, but this is a good campsite. We can fall back to this if somebody else took the other one. Cool. Oh, this is 100% it. Oh, you know, this tree is downed right on the campsite. Or is this not the campsite? I think this is it. Yeah, no, this was the tree, dude. This tree was where Brian hung his hammock for the first time. Wow, crazy. Now we updated the others about the situation. The campsite is kind of demolished. All of the trees are down. So here's our plan. We're gonna keep going towards Hanson's Point and there's lots of campsites on the way. So you guys just keep following the trail to Hanson's Point. We'll set up camp somewhere along the way. You'll find us, no problem. Okay. All right, good luck. Very nice. Looks good to me. This is good, they'll be able to find us easy here. There are some great moments in life. Mm -hmm. And then there's moments like this. <laughs> mm. 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 Combos never tasted so sweet. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna take my shoes off too. And then we ran into more friendly faces. <laughs> Tony, Tony, Cameron, Cameron Brian. Cameron. Brian. Brian. Nice you guys got shout outs or anything? Uh, no, not really, yeah. <laughs> to adventure. <laughs> adventure! <laughs> well, stay warm, stay yes, dry. You too. Yeah, thank All right, you. Nice meeting you. It was really great meeting you. Thanks so much. Uh, we're, we're here right now. And then it was time to cook up another gourmet meal. Chicken flavor broth concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll taste better than it looks. <laughs> Dude, this is like some homemade stuff. This is like... It says homemade small batch. Dude, where is this Ron? Where did you get this from, man? Did, did Ron make this? <laughs> it's a packet gourmet. Like somebody smashed up these tortillas and these cheeses and put this in this little baggie. I'm excited. And Thomas also prepared some ramen, the 50 cent variety. You, you try that, your sad meal. <laughs> I was gonna say. And then we'll try, hopefully not a sad meal. It's nice and warm though, that's for sure. Mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> well, I better try it too. I'm here to taste of that mediocrity. <laughs> so next, we top this with the chips and the cheese. Ooh. Sprinkle that lime on there. 
Oh yeah, come on, son. Finally, this is actually one of my favorite hot sauces. Cholula. Oh man. <laughs> that is tasty, wow. A lot of different flavors. And instantly transports you to a Mexican restaurant. Could you, could you take this off for me? Thank you. You got it, son. And then also, sparkling water. We dine fine tonight. Ah! That lime, that's good. Oh yeah. That's all you. You don't want any more? I'll finish this, this is my punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Your punishment for what? <laughs> bringing it. As the others finished up dinner, Brian and I geared up for our hike. We reviewed the map to make sure we were headed in the right direction, and then we're on our way. We were meeting up with Robbie and Thomas, who had already hiked quite a bit. After camping tonight, we would all hike out together on a familiar trail. The first portion of the hike ran parallel to a road, taking us from the trailhead to an actual main trail. And now, it was time for some plant identification. So this right here, that's a striped wintergreen. <laughs> so, this is a striped wintergreen, and we've seen it before while we've been hiking through here. And if you crush up the leaves, it has a really minty smell, and then you can actually use it in like tea and stuff. But it's one of my favorite mints. <laughs> <laughs> we made our way past rhododendrons and fallen trees, trudging through the soggy soil. It's a... Uh, a lot muddier than I expected. <laughs> I guess it's because my only experience here at Red River Gorge was summer trip with really perfect weather, but I kind of expected like the trails to be less muddy. <laughs> I feel like last time we were here, I remember it just being really sunny and like dry and rocky everywhere. <laughs> I don't know, I guess there were some muddy portions, but those are more towards the creeks. The part I remember the most is just the hot, rocky, dry surfaces. <laughs> Today's hike was short, and it wasn't long till we got to the first trail junction. All around us, we could see foggy hills in the distance. So I don't know about you, but the the way that it's so misty reminds me of the Smokies. The mist is just like, it always makes me think of the Smokies for some reason. I'm just glad it's just mist and not actually rain. <laughs> when we were driving up here, the temperature said it was like 42 degrees and it still sounds pretty cold, but man, after Nordhaus and like the 20 degree weather there, it's like a huge difference. All I have is just a long sleeve shirt underneath this. Oh man, I'm already like starting to break out into a sweat. We're not even like doing any anything intense. Yeah, it's funny how much hiking can warm you up, but yeah, after such a cold winter, like 40 degrees feels super balmy, <laughs> which is a good thing. Yeah, what's nice about this trail we were on is it, <laughs> it's really an easy hike, apparently. I feel like we're gonna regret the words coming out of our mouth. Yeah, we better be careful. To say that. <laughs> <laughs> we know luck has not been on our side in the past. <laughs> so we actually just ran into a couple guys who were on their way out, but they said they ran into two other people heading up to Hanson's Point with equipment similar to ours, and well, I think we know who that is. <laughs> After dinner, Thomas and I set up camp and decided to wander to Hanson's Point. Is it nice or is it nice to not have a pack? It's like I don't know what to do with my back. I feel like I want to <laughs> overcorrect and start walking. <laughs> I feel like you've been hyping it up a lot, so I'm trying to downplay a little bit more. But it's hard because you keep saying this is like one of the best experiences of your life. Well, I think also the context was very specific. It was early morning. We had no idea this was here. It was a secret trail and the sun was just coming up. It was just such an incredible moment. But well, man, there's lots of downed trees since the last time we were here. Was that really four years ago? 2015. That is crazy, dude. This is really like a enchanted forest because of how low the trees are. I have to crouch down, but the trail itself is really soft and well-maintained. It just feels like it's supposed to be here. Oh man, you can start to see it. Not looking until I get the answer. It's really hard 
That scene in the first Red River Gorge, just without even looking right now, probably didn't do it justice because, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Dude, look at that. What? I thought I thought it was supposed to be looking over here. That's why like my reaction this way was so genuine. Because I didn't think I'd actually be seeing this. Can you believe I almost didn't want to go to this? <laughs> Don't worry, I wouldn't have let you not go here. <laughs> There really was something absolutely magical about this spot. The fact that it was hidden away in an otherwise ordinary forest, and that his stunning views overlook such a vast gorge, really made it feel like something out of a storybook. Meanwhile, we were hiking along a ridge top surrounded by trees and mist, with sandstone beneath our feet. It kind of looks like there's just like a wall of clouds right up ahead. Every time I see that, I think we're about to come out to a really open area, but I think it's just an illusion for now. All right, so we are at the junction where we were originally supposed to meet. If we believe that they're camped pretty close to it. Yeah, it's gotta be. So we're gonna start seeing if we can hear them. And uh, if we can, we're gonna give them a whoop. <laughs> Let's see if we can hear anything right now. Nothing happening right now. As we continued, Robbie was graciously preparing the campsite for a warm welcome. We've got dry sticks over here that we picked up from under that cave. We're gonna do an upside down fire today. That's what I'm trying to do here without Andrew. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's better than nothing. And if all else fails, we got, we can just huddle around this for no, warmth. We can, we can start the fire with that. No, I mean, this is what we're gonna start with. You don't have matches, do you? No, I got the, uh, I got the ferro rod. Oh, we're not using a ferro rod. No, we're using this. <laughs> well, let's give the ferro rod a quick try and then we can use There's that. There's no tinder. We got these leaves. Leaves are not tinder, Thomas. You, just, can, you can try that, it will not work. Let's just give me, give it a try. Give it a try. I'll give you exactly 45 seconds to try it. Oh, come on. <laughs> Confronted with Robbie's impatience, I now understood why Andrew always insists on starting a fire the slow and inconvenient way. I don't know how this will work though, but we might be able to get something started. You want to set these on top of here? Because these are dry too. Okay, yeah. Oh, give me a second. Not yet, not yet. There we go. In case you're wondering, this is what happens when Andrew's not around. <laughs> we do have a good collection of wood though. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, not bad. No, not bad for old Rod and Tom. Hopefully this will keep burning all the way until when Brian and Andrew get here. Wherever they are, can't be the greatest place. Cause it's not right here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there are so many moments in camping where I say this is what I live for. And then everyone <laughs> like one ups the previous one. 20 miles. 20 miles, that's a fire worthy of 20 miles right there. It's also satisfying cause we made it without Andrew. Good work, sir. <laughs> Except we use propane, but that's all right. <laughs> Did you ever camp as a kid? No. Most I camped was on my deck. The first time I went camping, though, was with you, Brian, Andrew, Carl, Danny. I was a sophomore in high school. We went oh. to Hocking Hills. It was one of those freak warm days in February. It got really cold, like it should have been in February. Yeah. But that whole day it was warm. And this cold front came in, and with most cold fronts came a little bit of storm. Now, because Andrew and I were the runts of the group, we were the youngest. We had the tent without the rain fly. So when that storm came in, it got into the tent. We were like, all right, we'll tough this out. 
Then it after, was raining so hard. Then after about an inch of water in the tent, Andrew and I just said, that's it, we're going. So Andrew and I crawled into the car. All the blankets have been stripped out for the yeah. now soaking mm -hmm. tents. So we had nothing in there. Yeah. And Andrew and I were looking for warmth. Yeah. And uh, Andrew and I had to do a little cuddling together. <laughs> well, see, I was in the... I eventually got in the car with you guys. I found some mats on the floor, yeah. and I used those for warmth. That was a point in my life where it was on the precipice of becoming an adult. So going on a trip like that, I always assumed that somebody else would take care of like bringing the sleeping bags, the blankets. <laughs> None of us brought sleeping bags or blankets. And the sleeping bag that I had was the sleeping bag I used to take over to sleepovers because I was, you know, yeah. fresh into <laughs> high school and sleepovers were coming just like a little out of fashion yeah, yeah. then. There's not always a right way of doing things. There's sure as hell a bunch of wrong way of doing things. Yeah, we've definitely remarked on that before. <laughs> the, the most wrong decision you can do is go through something you did wrong and not learn from it. Mm. I'm Let's hoping Brian and Andrew make it here, man. It's already quite dark. So right now the trail is taking it downhill and it seems odd because the campsite as I remember it is that on like a nice cliffside. But actually, now that I think about it, I do remember we were gonna camp somewhere at the top of a ridge, and we were disappointed at first when the trail started going downhill, but then we found that amazing campsite. So yeah, I actually, I do remember this part of the trail. Yeah, do you remember this? Yeah, so this is the entrance to the campsite that we found last time, and we didn't know that it was going to Hanson's Point. Yeah. Robbie said that it was kind of a mess now with a bunch of downed trees, so. Yeah, I distinctly remember this though, like look at this. Here, this is where we had the tarp and the hammock set up. Wow, is this really it? It's been, what, four years? These trees grew a lot, look at this. Yeah, it's completely obscured the view. Wait, I hear something. I think probably an animal. Yeah, it's a bird. It sounds like an animal. There are a lot of like primal sounding birds out here. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm gonna give a whoop and see if they respond. All right. Whoop, whoop! Oh. Whoop, whoop, whoop! Whoop! <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> whoop. We made our way through thickets of pine, following the sound of their whoops. Whoop, whoop! <laughs> that was Robbie. That was a half-hearted whoop. <laughs> yup, yup. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I see a light. Oh, you're close now. They must have seen our light. Yeah. Come to salvation, my friends. <laughs> salvation is near. Oh, you got fire too. Oh yeah. Oh. I believe it. <laughs> we lugged some dry wood from a cave for miles. <laughs> <laughs> miles and miles. Oh, super nice. Oh. Good to see you. Good to see Good you. To see you. <laughs> Yes. Forty degrees. Yet, <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice fire. Yeah, Forty yeah. degrees is so much warmer. <laughs> yeah, the North House is like ridiculous. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. What a beautiful sight this is. <laughs> that was actually a super easy hike, but it's still oh, good. Good, good. It's good, still good, good. great. Andrew was like, "What do you think the campsite's gonna be like?" I'm like, "I know Robbie and Thomas. We're gonna get a good one." <laughs> but yeah, the old campsite. Unrecognizable. Yeah, no, yeah, it was totally destroyed. Yeah. Like, well, part of it is also the trees have grown. Like, yeah. I was telling you. Robbie, the last time you guys were here was four years ago. Yeah. Four Actually, years ago. I came here before then, and it was still pretty clear when I went. I think. Oh, really? Wow. Yes. Yeah, weird. How much stuff changes. <laughs> Good to have you guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you guys didn't do what? You guys didn't meet Ron, and Ron hooked us up with some fantastic oh, food. Ron. We were laughing because we we're like, how is it that Robbie always runs into people that just give him food? <laughs> <laughs> it was great to be reunited, especially after such a long hike. And Andrew brought a tasty snack. Uh, instead of Thomas's inferior pretzels, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I brought a, I brought these honey mustard pretzel pieces, which, in my opinion, is the only way hard pretzels should be eaten. But oh, the pieces are not even full pretzels. Oh yeah. Let me see this. Look at these pieces. <laughs> these Snyder's? Mm -hmm. My butter snaps are Snyder's. <laughs> They're not honey mustard. <laughs> <laughs> They're butter. We were, Andrew was like originally wanted to film that before we got here, <laughs> so I could just say it behind Thomas's back. <laughs> Having said that, give me more. 
<laughs> Looks like your inferior fire could use a little air. <laughs> you know what? We, want... we hiked 20 miles today. <laughs> Combined 20 miles. You guys did too. I'm just kidding. This is a very, this is a very good fire. A long time ago. <laughs> long, long time ago. I, I'm sorry, but we forgot who sent this to us now. <laughs> but you know who you are. They called it a fire stick, and we were really inexperienced back then. And we were like, what do you do? Do you like use it to poke the fire? But now that we have a little bit more knowledge, <laughs> I realize that this is so that we can blow on the fire and like stoke it. But it's kind of cool they used like an old um, putter that they wrapped with some cord. Oh, yeah. Let's try it. Well, it seems like it's, yeah, it's not doing a bad job at all. With the fire going, we set up our tent. And in the meantime, Thomas roasted some spam for us over the fire. Wait, did, did you just make that sound? <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay, I thought that was like, it's like, whoa, that thing really started sizzling. Dink, dink. Hot on the outside, cold on the inside. Just <laughs> like, <way> I like it. <laughs> it's actually got a pretty nice smoky flavor though. It's the wood that makes it good. <laughs> Now for some entirely undeserved indulgence. <laughs> <laughs> I brought some uncured Genoa salami. So I've been wrapping them around like mozzarella sticks. Is this a good idea or a terrible idea? <laughs> <clears throat> I think you mean, is this a good idea or a great just idea? Don't, <laughs> just don't burn it and you'll be fine. Wow, that is great, dude. Mm -hmm. Good thinking. Thomas, you want another oh, one? Oh, sure. Thank you. Clifty Wilderness versus Red River. They really do look a lot different. I mean. I'm sure you guys noticed it's that. It's like one is in the bottom and one's on the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of cool when we came up to the campsite entrance, like how immediately we recognized it. Mm -hmm. But then when we got to the campsite, for a second I was like, is this it? Because with the trees down and just like, and it being so enclosed, it felt totally different. Yeah. Thomas, I feel like I haven't seen you since New Year. <laughs> How's your year been? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've been sticking true to some of those New Year's resolutions. Yeah, I was gonna ask everyone how they're doing there. <laughs> have you been more serious? I think I have. It's less being serious all the time and taking things more seriously. That's where I'm kind of adapting things. <clears throat> Plus I feel like there's a time and a place. Huh? Mm -hmm. And now is the time for not serious. <laughs> <laughs> I've been taking Kung Fu lessons. <laughs> the Kung Fu lessons are to bust through that wall. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm gonna go roast this tortilla. <laughs> <laughs> when we realized that we would be like um, here for like less than 24 hours <laughs> and hiking like less than a, a mile or less than two miles a day, like, we I really don't need to pack that much. <laughs> no. We were wondering about that too. Robbie and I were joking, this is more of a Thomas and Robbie adventure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But well, it feels good a... to get out. That is mm -hmm. nice. Now it's a four-person party though. <laughs> we're, we're bringing the party. <laughs> it's, a, it's a 4G. <laughs> Can't get 5G signal out here yet. <laughs> Why do people watch us? <laughs> you guys must feel really good right now. Like oh, yeah. After having hiked all that. Yeah, it was a decent hike. Robbie yeah. and I are a team of Efficiency. Mm. Having said that, though, the chemistry still isn't alive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this like in a serious way. Like we weren't cracking up the way we are now. <laughs> we were on the trail. <laughs> what a bizarre uh, thing to say. <laughs> uh, man. Uh. <laughs> I think you just hate Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No, but it is good to have you guys. Yes. Yeah, there's that you can't have peanut butter and jelly if there's no butter or jelly. <laughs> you can't have peanut butter and jelly without the bread to sandwich it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a much better metaphor than what I just said. <laughs> After a night full of laughter and idiotic jokes, we got into our tents as the fog rolled into the forest. Well, the good thing is it uh, seems like it's actually going to be a pretty warm night. I, I packed way more clothes than I needed for this temperature. I don't think there's any chance that I'm going to get too cold tonight. Yeah, and it's like 
after Nordhaus dunes, it's just like, oh yeah, that's good. That's perfectly yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, sometimes what it really takes to understand what you need for cold weather camping is just actually doing it. But I think we're going to be toasty tonight. <sighs> Definitely. It was a quiet morning. Everything around us was saturated in morning dew. Oh my god. Join me, Thomas. I will. Mm. Oh, it's been a while. So the whole point of this trip was for me to Get myself off that coffee. <laughs> so this is what we call an enabler. Come join us. It's nice and warm. <laughs> Good old Brewster here. <sighs> <laughs> Brian gonna sleep through Hanson's point again. <laughs> <laughs> Brian did eventually get up, and we made our way through the thick trees to Hanson's point. Unfortunately, the morning's fog was somewhat limiting the view. That really sucks that Brian came here for the first time. <laughs> and it's just like a white sheet. <laughs> I guess it wasn't fated to be that Brian gets to see the majesty. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree. In Red River Gorge, the first episode, I did not expect it actually to look like this. Like, I thought it was just a tiny little rock sticking out. Same. But this is like... This is awesome. Look, you can see the cliff side. Even with the fog obscuring the view, the scale of everything was incredibly impressive. The expanse of rock and the vastness of the mist-covered valley. Is that smiley face still here? I don't think it's yeah. hard to get we made our way further out onto the rock. The fog really made it feel like we were experiencing Earth at the dawn of time, or that we had climbed into some hidden, heavenly realm. We headed back to the camp and soon hiked out past the old campsite. I guess it's the end of an era. Still cannot believe this is the campsite. <laughs> it's really weird. Man. End of an era. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> For each of us, this trip had been a unique experience. I had re-experienced miles and miles of this landscape, noticing what had changed over the years and what had remained the same. And for me, the 20 plus miles were a completely new experience that fleshed out what I had only known through secondhand accounts and stories. I had finally gotten to experience Hanson's Point and seeing the landscape during a different season made it that much more unique. And while the others had hiked dozens of miles, Brian and I had had a fairly short trip, but now we were all taking the final journey together. There's a deep satisfaction in being able to take each of our own experiences of the gorge and share them with each other. 
For some of us, the cliffs and rocks conjured up vivid memories of our past trip. But for others, the wavy sandstone walls were excitingly unfamiliar. You recognize this, Thomas? Oh, really? I just remember at the time thinking how unique this was. Yeah. It was like such a strange thing to just go up a little creek. And on top of that, so much of this place had changed. Trees had grown or fallen over, and stones had been carved out into steps. This makes it a lot easier. <laughs> How did we even get up last time? <laughs> Which way to the post hike meal? See any chestnut bolates? I don't see any. There's something. Look like an old, an old orange peel. <laughs> <laughs> so much can change over the course of a few years. We grow alongside the earth and nature around us. And as we grow, we each have unique life experiences that shape how we relate to and interpret the world. Spend a bit of time with us, and it's clear to see that each of us is in many ways vastly different from each other. But at the end of the day, we realize just how much we have in common with each other, and how our own uniqueness contributes to the group as a whole. A lot of times, we think that life is about competing with each other and becoming better than each other who can identify the most mushrooms or hike the farthest or whatever. I gotta get back in shape. That was tough. It was a tough one. <sighs> so that's where we went last time. Oh, I see. On the left. And it was literally just right here? Yeah, somehow we missed it. I think the foliage was a little thicker. It seems true maturity is realizing that life is not about being better than others. It's about bettering ourselves. We should aim to become better, but not so that we can inflate our egos, as tempting as that may be. Instead, we should think about the world around us. Our goals for improvement should be driven by something higher than ourselves. Everybody has their own individual journey, each with different interests, experiences, and conditions. But it's when we take these unique experiences and what we've gained from them and apply them to the community around us that we become truly fulfilled. When we focus on self-improvement, not as a means to become the best, but as a means to become a better person to others, that's when our individual self can truly begin to ascend to a higher level. This isn't nature's way of saying time to get out. I don't know what is. <laughs> I guess the whole 2019 no rain thing didn't pan out. <laughs> but I'd rather have it at the end of the trip. We go right up convoy. Ain't she a beautiful sight?
We almost got away with no rain this trip. <laughs> it's very moist in here. This is like the that nightmare scenario where you're like on the school bus when it's raining. <laughs> it really starts to smell like wet dog. Except where are the dogs here? The seat's warm. It's just because your butt's so cold. <laughs> Once again, Ron did not lead us astray. Well, thank you. <laughs> Give complete props to Ron <laughs> for everything he's done on this trip. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, it tastes good. Second of all, this is frozen solid. <laughs> It's partially frozen. What did uh, Tim B say when we? Oh, throat rippingly. Throat yeah. rippingly cold beer, except it's unfortunately not beer. <laughs> oh right, right, right. He's got it for now. He invited us. It's called the Grazer. Vegetarian. Not that I'm vegetarian, but I've got feta cheese. I love feta cheese. Mm. That's the best German I've tasted. <laughs> you guys ever heard my dad say, we're eating like we just got out of prison? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're eating like we just got out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> you guys deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't really. <laughs> say what? Man, that, no, 26, 27 miles? That last trail was still pretty rigorous. Yeah. yeah. Boy, that Lauren 10 Ike is a great new employee, I tell you what. It's probably thanks to their father, who instilled in them a love of the outdoors. Man, talking about that dang old Eric Brummel with the Adventure Archives, talking about that dang old inspiration to get outdoors and everything, talking about dang old camping. Well, I tell you what, I've been working for Expedition Research LLC for 13 years selling backpacks and backpack accessories, and it's always the outdoors ones who sell the most. Man, talking about the dang old adventure archives and I'm talking about the YouTube and got many dang old supporters like Jason Bourgeois and then talking about Sarah Churchwell and the dang old Jim Potts and Jacob Milliken. You know, what the dang old, you know, Patreon. You know, Boomhauer, you always know just what to say. If you're gonna learn to be true dodgeballers, then you've got to learn about the five famous dodgeballers. Jessica Rokes, Anne McBride, Hong Long, Charlie Joe, and Sequestration, otherwise known as T. Bryce Ryan. Who wants to let you know, by the way, keep sharing and caring. Jasper Caparota, go ahead. Me? Or... Yeah, I, I just want to give a shout out to the American Hiking Association and to remind everyone to stay dirty. Um, but also, shouldn't we be learning how to play dodgeball by, like, dodging balls that are thrown at us or something? That's what the sack of wrenches is for. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. So, you want to learn Kung Fu? Come with me, I'll teach you. This is called dispersing hands. This is called slapping hands. This is called tuck and coop. Hold out two fingers. 
When I drop the leaf, I want you to catch it. Do you know why you can't catch the leaf? It's because you can't identify it. If you learn from my other students, Noah and Mila Johnson, and keep practicing your bushcraft skills, then eventually, you can relax and have a great summer. Shout out, as always, to the ones, the only, John and Lisa Truitt. You guys have been supporting us since time immemorial. And a special shout out today to Duncan. I know it's tough, man, but this too shall pass. We're rooting for you. Hope you feel better. For the record, we're not getting paid by them. Because <laughs> if we were, they'd be like, did you really have to do that right then? <laughs>